What's up guys? Carla McAfinlack here from newbiefitnessacademy.com. I help busy professionals look good shirtless so they can feel more confident and get the most out of their lives. And in this video, I'm going to show you six simple and proven ways on how to break through your weight loss plateau. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified every time I post a new video every week. All right, let's dive in. Okay, before we get started, I'm gonna assume that you're following the eat less, move more, calories in versus calories out model of weight loss, you're on a calorie deficit, and now you've hit the dreaded weight loss plateau. Don't worry, here are six simple and proven ways on how to break it. Number one, get some sleep. People often miss the boat on this, but if you wanna lose weight, then this is your starting point. It's your lowest hanging fruit. This part is so important that even if I give you the best diet advice and the best workouts on the planet, but if you don't get this right, you're not gonna be able to break through your weight loss plateau. If that's news to you, that's a very good indicator why you're stuck. Studies show that over a third of American adults are not getting enough sleep on a regular basis. That number is probably similar to the rest of the Western Hemisphere. Why is that important? Well, according to research, lack of sleep has a direct relation to weight gain and eventually obesity and raises the risk of developing heart disease and other illnesses. According to one study, those who averaged five hours of sleep were 73% more likely to be overweight than those who slept for seven to nine hours. 73 freaking percent, all because you're not getting enough sleep. The math here is pretty simple. The less you sleep, the more you weigh. You need to take your sleep seriously. I have literally never met anybody who complained about getting enough sleep. So how do we fix this? Captain obviously, get some sleep. Ideally, anywhere between seven to nine hours in a pitch black room every night. Try to stay away from any screen that emits light at least an hour before you go to bed. That'll help your body align with your natural circadian rhythm. Number two, track your macros. Listen, if you don't track what you eat, your diet will always be a guessing game, even though you're eating quote unquote healthy. You simply can't control what you can't measure and we're terrible at estimating how much food we actually eat. In one study, obese people reported consuming about 1,200 calories per day. However, a detailed analysis of their intake over a 14-day period showed that they were actually consuming nearly twice that amount on average. Talk about complete denial. Let's use nuts for example. A lot of people snack on them, right? And it's generally considered healthy for you. But there's a big difference between snacking on a handful of almonds that you carefully measured versus eating an entire bag. Listen, tracking your calories and macros can provide concrete information about how much you're actually taking in. I know it can be tedious at first, but this will allow you to make the necessary adjustments in order to break your weight loss plateau. I use an app called MyFitnessPal to track my macros and it's been a complete game changer when it comes to my diet. If you've never heard of the app before, then make sure you check out my video tutorial somewhere at the top here. Number three, cut back on carbs. Listen, if you have excess body fat that you want to lose and you've hit a weight loss plateau, the most direct path to breaking that plateau is by cutting out carbs, especially processed carbs and sugar. And the simple explanation on this is out of all three macronutrients, carbs, especially refined carbs, spike the hormone insulin the most. And if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that insulin is a very important hormone in your body. It's the hormone that controls your body weight. All you need to know is that if your insulin levels are high, you can't access your body fat for energy. You just can't. So high insulin blocks fat burning, which means that the opposite is also true. I'm talking about the high fat, low carb diet here. Multiple studies have now confirmed that low carb diets are extremely effective for weight loss. How effective? Well, here's one of my private coaching clients. She lost 25 pounds in six months without exercise. Here's another one, and another one, and another. And the last one's me. You get the point. And if you want to know more about my coaching program, then make sure you stick around until the end of the video. One large review of 13 studies with follow-up lasting at least a year found that people who consumed 50 or fewer grams of carbs per day lost more weight than those following traditional weight loss diets. This diet, by the way, is more commonly known as the ketogenic diet. It's an unbelievably powerful tool when it comes to breaking through a weight loss plateau. The keto diet reduces your appetite, it increases fat loss compared to a standard high-carb, low-fat diet. It lowers triglyceride levels. It increases levels of good HDL cholesterol. It reduces blood sugar and insulin levels and is unbelievably effective when it comes to reversing metabolic syndrome. 
Low-carb diets have consistently been shown to reduce hunger and promote feelings of fullness more than any other diet. In addition, they cause your body to produce ketones, which have been shown to reduce appetite. This may lead you to unconsciously eat less, making it easier to begin losing weight again without hunger or discomfort. Who knew that eating more cheese, butter, eggs, and bacon could be the key to breaking through your weight loss plateau? If you want to know more about the keto diet, then make sure you check out the links at the top here, or you can wait until the end of the video. Number four, manage stress. This is a big one. Stress is such an underappreciated topic, but nonetheless, just as important part of breaking through your weight loss plateau. Here's the problem with stress specifically chronic stress. In addition to promoting comfort eating and triggering food cravings, it also increases your body's production of cortisol. If you don't know what that is, cortisol is known as the stress hormones and it triggers the fight or flight response in your body. Your pupils dilate, you get a surge of adrenaline, and your body floods your blood with glucose for immediate use. And in short-term situations, this isn't a bad thing. This is what allows you to outrun somebody that's trying to rob you or you can use that extra energy to fight off that person. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're only dealing with stress for that short amount of time. The problem is, in today's modern society, that's not what happens, right? From students stressed out of their minds studying for exams, to relationship problems, maybe you're going through a long, drawn-out divorce process and you're dealing with legal problems. Maybe you're having a hard time making ends meet. Or maybe you're going through a combination of all those things. Either way, you're constantly stressed and it never goes away. And that's the problem. Chronic stress means you're producing too much cortisol and your body's response to this is to put on weight, usually around your belly. So if you're chronically stressed, that's a very good indicator why you're not losing weight. Listen, stress is a part of life. It's like death and taxes, but there are definitely things that you can do to help manage it, like practicing meditation, journaling, and finding a community. Number five, slow down your workouts. Raise your hand if you're currently racking up a dozen or so hours of cardio workouts each week or you're hitting the gym every day for prolonged training sessions targeting every single muscle fiber in your body. If that sounds like you, then your workouts might actually be contributing to your weight loss plateau. Remember, exercise is good for you. It has many benefits, but weight loss isn't really one of them. 90% of your body composition success is determined by how you eat. The details of your exercise program, specifically the amount of calories that you burn, which is what we commonly consider the determining factor for weight loss, is much less influential than you think. Listen, just because it says you burn 300 calories on the treadmill doesn't mean that you can have a donut afterwards. It doesn't work like that. You simply can't outrun a bad diet. Reducing body fat is all about hormone optimization through a low insulin producing diet. And of course, exercise is a place, but not until you've moderated the wildly excessive insulin production in your diet. And again, cutting carbs, especially processed carbs, is the fastest way to get there. This might be a tough pill to swallow, but the calories that you burn during a workout minimally contributes to your fat loss goals. Instead, exercise stimulates a compensatory increase in appetite. So you eat more calories when you burn more calories. That's why the calories in versus calories out model doesn't work. And I think we've all been there before. Think about how big your appetite was after a long, hard workout. You just wanted to eat everything in sight, right? Listen, I love working out. I'm a competitive weightlifter, but I encourage you to reframe your perspective from more is better to brief and intense is better. Make your hard workouts even harder, but not longer or more frequent. You don't always have to go balls to the wall every time you go to the gym. It doesn't always have to feel like a near-death experience. In fact, for the average Joe who just wants to look at shirtless, you can actually get extremely healthy and fit with just a few hours per week of basic walking and moving around, doing comfortable cardio workouts, combined with a couple of strength workouts and some high-intensity interval training workouts. Try not to be married to such a regimented routine. Like, you don't always have to do legs on Monday, then on Tuesday you do chest, and so on. You don't always have to be consistent. In fact, it's better if you're inconsistent with your workouts. Number six, fast intermittently. Okay, if you follow tips one through five and you're still having a hard time losing weight, then intermittent fasting might just be the ultimate way to break your weight loss plateau. And the concept is pretty simple. It involves going for short periods of time without eating, typically between 16 to 24 hours. This pattern of eating has been credited with promoting amazing health benefits like improved mental clarity and concentration. It induces fat loss. It lowers blood sugar levels. It improves insulin sensitivity, and I mentioned this earlier how important insulin sensitivity is when it comes to controlling your weight and breaking through your weight loss plateau. It increases energy, 
It reduces inflammation. It lowers blood cholesterol, particularly your small LDL particles, the stuff that actually causes heart disease. Fasting helps prevent Alzheimer's disease and even reverses the aging process because of the growth hormone response in your body. Pretty impressive, right? And I always say that weight loss might be the least impressive benefit of fasting when you consider all the improvements in your biomarkers from simply taking a break from eating. A review of several intermittent fasting studies found that it led to 3-8% to weight loss and 3-7% to decrease in waist circumference within 3-24 to weeks. Talk about the ultimate way to break your weight loss plateau. And this is one of my favorite questions to ask anyone with excess body fat that wants to lose it but is stuck with the conventional wisdom of being in a caloric deficit for too long while eating 6 small meals a day. What do you think will happen if you take a break from eating? Seriously. What do you think will happen if you don't eat? That's right, you're gonna lose weight. Listen, it's not about eating less, okay? That's just gonna slow down your metabolism. It's about eating the right types of food that turns you into a fat burner and then you combine that with fasting intermittently. Remember, body fat isn't just there for looks. It's stored energy. Think of it as granola bars strapped to your body. All you have to do is give your body a chance to access it. When you take a break from eating, like let's say you skip breakfast, Think of it as your body eating your fat source for breakfast. But again, the key determinant of that is insulin because you have to open up those stores of body fat for you to burn. And that only happens when your insulin levels are low. And the easiest and fastest way to drop your insulin level is through fasting. That's why it's so effective when it comes to helping you break through your weight loss plateau. Okay, the next question then becomes, what's the next step after all this? Do you need help implementing the information I just gave you? Well, if you're someone who's been struggling with losing weight for years, you know, you've tried every diet under the sun, you've cut the fat, you've gone on a calorie deficit diet, you work out every day, but you just can't seem to lose weight, or maybe you're feeling stuck because you've hit a weight loss plateau and you can't seem to get out of it, you feel like life is just passing you by, you're missing out on opportunities, and you realize that it's time to get one-on-one -on -one professional help, then feel free to reach out to me. Head on over to my website, newbiefitnessacademy.com forward slash coaching, read through the page and the success stories, and fill out the application form for a free consultation. If I think that we're a good fit, then I'll personally reach out to you directly. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every Friday, and hey, leave me a comment below if you found this video helpful or if you have any questions about this topic. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the comment section. Virtual high five.